Let's welcome your first team to the stage one more time, the Boston Uprising! A team so stacked with talent that some said it couldn't be done. They couldn't be brought together to make something stronger, but they have proved that wrong. Time and time again, it's been the DPS. It's been Smurf on the tank. It's been the supports diving your back line. 5v1, these guys never stop pushing in, and I think we're going to see even more of that today. I want to see that aggression. want to see the intensity and the counter picks. Take Spark off their game and take them out of this tournament. Let's go, Boston Uprising. And their opponents, for the final time, welcome to the stage, the Hangzhou Spark! The guys who prove that Reverse Sweep is indeed a skill. Levas looks fantastic this tournament on the Tracer. Shy, the best soldier player in the world. And Gu Shui, he can play both the Winston and the Doomfist in this one. It's going to be an uphill battle for the Boston Uprising team that likes the versatility, likes playing all these different tanks. But Hydro Spark, they took down the Atlanta Rain, and they've taken down the Boston Uprising already once so far this tournament. Can they do it again to secure third for China? All right, guys, you already know the deal here. Now, obviously, this is a third, fourth place match, but folks, let's not get it twisted. This is an opportunity for one of these two teams make history, put themselves on a podium here at the Overwatch League playoffs. The question is, is it gonna be the Uprising or is it gonna be the Hangzhou Spark? Well, let's go ahead and turn around to the gallery and see what do we think? Uh, maybe a little Boston Uprising love in the house. How about the Hangzhou Spark? Oh man, this crowd is hot for the spark. Let's go ahead and get ready and send this over to two casters. I couldn't think would be better in this situation. The one and only Necra and Vicky Kitty. Thank you so much, Golden Boy. Toronto, are you ready for some more Overwatch League? We cannot be more excited to be the voice of this final match for these two teams. Phenomenal players, phenomenal seasons, and phenomenal journeys for every single one that are sitting in this match right now. The biggest money match that we could ever have here. This makes a difference between which team will be walking away from a $100,000 money match. It's not just about the placement, it's about the money that these teams will be bringing home. about all of these individual players and the legacies that they have created throughout each season of the Overwatch League. You got a chance to look at the accolades of the Boston Uprising. There's six title rings on that team right now. And I know that they both wanted to have that prize and that shot at the Grand Finals, but they both get to lay it all out on the line here to see which team will be able to take home that third place and all of that money. Also the run back opportunity for Boston out here. Let's not forget the comeback masters themselves. <laughs> the Hanjo Spark, you heard it on the desk earlier. You're gonna hear it now. And is this gonna consist in this next series if Boston had learned their lesson against the Spark? How many teams can say that? That in a playoffs match, they were able to get a reverse sweep, not once, but twice. Let's open up the gates and welcome back the Hangzhou Spark and the Boston Uprising as they're going to come out on both of their compositions that have been able to net them so much success in this tournament so far. You've got Smurf on the Orisa to be able to hold the front line and the Hangzhou Spark, Gu Shui, going to bring out that Doomfist alongside the Shy Sojourn, leaves Tracer. These are all players that want to leave everything out here as they square up over this midpoint. And the composition that reaped them that success when they started their reverse sweep on Suda Vassal on day two. Getting started already, the Boston Uprising have cleared the space, have been able to take control over the point first. And Smurf going to be able to actually clear some of that space himself. Had the Jasmine earlier, sends out the Javelin itself. Going to be able to control where Gushui is going to be right behind them. That's a little anti though, and it's a three. 
Birdring Decay, and he's Iyaki. And the patience wears off for Monk, Gushui, and Leaf to completely wipe out the Uprising in this first team fight. You're already going to see an adjustment come through from the Boston Uprising. They're going to throw their composition out the window. And they're going to go over to a bit more of aggressive comp with that Junker Queen as well as that Bastion. Birdring's Bastion has been such a nuisance to every single tank that they have faced up against. And Hunter Spark, they're just gonna try to play as smart, go around that damage. Success here from Smurf had made the swap over to the Jerker Queen like we had seen the action from the very beginning. And map number one against these two teams earlier on now are able to get that first pick onto Lee. Who had such a performance on the trade, so the window coming up from Izayaki. Having to be careful though, though, sitting around Gushui. He's lost out on Monk already, and Lex is gonna be in right back in the spawn. With them getting the reverse, Birdwing coming in, and Boston Uprising going in back and forth like a seesaw, taking control over the points. Izayaki did such a good job of staying alive there as well. You can see him just teetering on that brink of death, but long enough to be able to play patient with those skills and be able to get that immortality field out to just get Boston Uprising more and more percentage. Gonna get taxied back into the fight by Lee Jae Gone, able to go back and make sure that that Baptiste is back in action. But Hongjo Spark are coming back with a vengeance. They've got three ultimates to their name, make it four as Monk's gonna have that nano boost up too. Which means that survivability for the Spark are gonna be beautiful. The Meteor Strike, oh, but Lee with the Pulse Bomb! Watch your back! Izayaki is out of the fight. Monk sends out the nano boost on the Gushway and he's just going to be able to hold forward, although Decay and Spark don't go down without a fight. But the number advantage still favors Spark just for right now, but Gushui lost on the fucking Lexa, but he doesn't even need it. He's found Lee Jae gone, still keeping himself alive, managing to navigate around the point with Smurf still being here with some sustainability. Sends Smurf to the Shadow Realm just over to the right side, and he's going to be able to back up, still stall while maintaining control over the point to surpass that of the Uprising. Nice sneak away there as the Hangzhou Sparks still get ready to use that overclock too, but it's Lynx's rally to kick things off. Oh, Lee Jae gone the first to get picked off with the rally from Lynx. Set them up and shy, hitting those shots, finding Decay next. Gujui holding forward, making the space for Shy to shine. 68% and climbing here for the Spark, and the Uprising are approaching that second to last fighting game territory. Haven't even needed the overclock either. Let's not forget that Shia Sojourn was able to walk away with 57% accuracy on those charged railgun shots. But Decay has a blade. This guy's been able to get so much done with this ultimate, and he is squaring up looking for that first target. That is to say if the lamp helps him out, puts him into position. The shot was used early from Smurf here. He's got the rampage in hand. Shy though with that overclock that you mentioned. Activate, sends Lee Jae gone right back. Gonna be able to control that space. They are funneled inside this room. They look like a can of sardines for Elite to send out the Pulse Bomb and for Gushui to profit. Spark, they get the first round in the bag. You saw that 0 3 earlier today. That was their practice maps. That was just their practice maps. You heard it from them. Sometimes they take a little bit to warm up, but that round looked clean. You see. How excited the Hangzhou Spark are right now to be able to play this match and just show us everything. The vibes look high for this team. Smiles all around, being able to take away from that loss and what they have to do better here. They've already done it against the Basso Uprising. They could do it again. We saw the emotion from Leaf earlier. Let's get started onto round number two as the Boston Uprising may be looking to change things up. Boston Uprising are going to be heading over to a dive composition this time around. Huh. So that's well. going to be the third tank choice that we're seeing out of Smurf. And we've got the Somber Tracer, Winston, Anna, Brig, Boston Uprising's most lethal composition of this entire season. Was able to grab them a ton of match wins in the summer stage. And Smurf is one of the most iconic Winstons to date. Oh. We barely gets out of there. You saw that hack. He was so close to falling off the edge. She was hitting his way right back onto that lip. Try and nail down Izayaki. See the ping coming in as Monk does get hacked. It's a follow-up opportunity here. Izayaki having to never get away, but on the other side, it's Lee with the focusing beam. Focusing down that backline. They do trade backlines here, though. And just trying to wait for the opportunity while Decay tries to nail down Lee. But with this Echo, he has so much sustainability in the way he can navigate vertically here on the well. That backline is going to be coming back as well. You can see Boston Uprising giving away just a little bit of that point. So that Izayaki and Lee Gon do have the rest of the team in their sight lines. Boston Uprising able to grab that cap and come back as a full team of five. Nice positioning from Gushui there. I liked how he was trying to isolate Smurf from the rest of his team, putting down that bubble so he can't get sustainability. But the stick on the pulse of the Lee Gon. 
and Izayaki, who are the first two to get picked once again, starting this fight, delaying more time away from the Uprising. The Boston Uprising, they have to scatter. They gotta wait for Birdring's EMP to be able to come online. Biggest difference maker, though, is Hongjo Spark. They're not gonna be playing Lucio, so there is no sound barrier to be able to help mitigate the power of that Sombra ult. But you still have the Rally, you still have the Nano, ways to be able to deal with that just extra fire pressure coming through from Boston. Watch where Bird Ring goes. He wants to get set up for this EMP to try to take this away from the Spark. Leave knows. Leave has a duplicate too, ready. Bird Ring. In the back, trying to wait for the support, activates the EMP and finds Monk and Lengsa. Is able to get the follow-up from Decay onto Lengsa to get that pick, but Monk still happens to stay alive. Decay then gets shy, two out, as Leave uses the duplicate to add another sustainability. Cop and Liana gets a mana boost, but gets booted out immediately right afterwards. Leave Gu Shui and Lengsa making his way back though, here as Gu Shui gets sent out, and the Uprising, having the number of advantages, get to retake this point. Fantastic use of the EMP there, and what a great trade of the ultimates as well for Boston. They were able to get the duplicate out of Leave, as well as the Nano out of Monk, and that's critical heading into these next few fights, because Lengsa doesn't have the rally either. So, Hangzhou Spark, they're gonna have to come back into this one in the midpoint here, where Boston are able to set the pace of this. They could pop that Primal Rage really early, or even just gift over the Nano. Like I said, we'll have the rally at least in this upcoming fight right here. The heck of the muck and leave with the focusing beam onto Decay, who would have had the bullet bump for this fight. The nano boost onto Smurf, the sustainability, and Monk with these sleeps. Boots up to sleep. He's got three on him, but he had the primal to reset. He gets melted down, put in the microwave as leaves. Beams him with the focusing beam. Holds forward, finds Lee Jagon as a next victim. And they are able to not only retake the point, but now surpass the uprising. These antis from Monk, we call it out so many times, but those bionades have been such difference makers in these fights for Hongzhou Spark. <laughs> you saw just how quickly Smurf got deleted when the anti went on to him, even though he was primaling and had that overhelp. But Hongzhou Spark now, they are set up for success. They are 25% away from being able to capture this second round and this first map, and they're gonna have a full slate of ultimates to do it. They can throw everything in the kitchen sink at this next one to close it out. The fact that Bird Ring is about to get another EMP soon. Leave was trying to spy check him. We saw him with the focusing beam. He's got the duplicate. Spark have a plethora of ultimates to work with here. Gujway activates the primal. So close to the ledge here off the map. He gets hit with another anti, having to back away. Huge anti also had hit as a lead from Izayaki and with the rally from Lee Jae Gon to try to help heal. But a huge anti from Monk caused the demise of the backline from the uprising. Gujway gets the profit right after that, using that nano boost. And Leave had the duplicate too. They send out every Everything as overtime ticks away in favor for the Spark, and they take match number one in the speed run. They're warm. They're ready. They are hungry. And Hangzhou Spark is looking to prove everybody wrong yet again that they are still a force to be reckoned with. There were some APAC doubters. I don't think there's any APAC doubters anymore. But the Boston Uprising put up a heck of a fight, but hey, Hangzhou Spark. They just keep playing things to their own game. The dive, so clean, so aggressive. Taking a look at some of these highlights at the very end. What a play from Monk. We keep talking about it for a reason, but Monk's sleep and that huge anti on that back line definitely was a nail in the coffin for that final fight to help out the spark here. Gucci was just able to profit as we take a look at Shy clicking on everybody who is just forced to back away. Nowhere to run for Smurf. A few times too, even making the adjustment, swapping over to the Echo here and well makes so much sense because again, you have that verticality so that way you can reposition yourself safely in the line of sight of Monk, who could not have to put himself in a vulnerable position. And what's the nicest thing about the Hangzhou Spark lineup, and they've showed us this throughout the course of the playoffs, is that they have a lot of that <laughs> flexibility to work with in terms of their hero pools so that they can bring in these different flavors of the DPS or the tank, whatever Gushue is playing, and pull off stunts like that. That and the fact that everyone just jumped on the opportunity where you try to get a reset, you pop the primal, but you got not only hit by the focus of being the anti, everybody, everything under the sun, but now you have to go back to the drawing board here. It's gonna be the uprising pick. We are moving on to Midtown. And that's coming to you on the other side of this break.
Welcome back, everyone. The Hangzhou Spark take game number one as we move on to our second map onto Midtown. We see some changes coming in. The Spark trying to continue their run, knowing themselves as the comeback masters, now having to face off in this placement match. This placement match is definitely super tricky for them as well, but they're already up one map. We're getting a sub. We haven't seen a whole lot of Pineapple this season, but when he's come into the roster, he shows up in such a big way, especially being able to play some of those more mechanically skilled flex support heroes like the Kiriko, like the Alari. We have seen this Pineapple sub in the past, and that should give us a nice view on what the Hongjo Spark want to come into Midtown with when this was Boston Uprising's pick. This was uh, also a very similar swap out that we had seen. I believe it was day number one where Pineapple came in onto Midtown. He was able to play the Iliadi out here too. So having that verticality that he could also work with to see how this could benefit the Spark. Again, this is going to be the Uprising counter pick. So this is something that the Spark have been trying to figure out as they do bring in Pineapple. Pineapple started out as a DPS player. Now he gets to come in to be able to show off a lot of those skills that well translate over to those types of roles. But Midtown coming up next. Boston Uprising have been able to put on a heck of a performance on this map in particular, especially when they want to run something like the Smurf Arissa. What a great way to be able to hold the high ground and also be able to just make sure they can contest in some of those smaller chokes, those smaller doorways. Also finding that space that you need by that second checkpoint too, where we see a lot of teams struggling to get through that car wash. Taking a look at what the Uprising are going to be bringing, maybe something similar to what we had seen in the Atlanta rain. By the way, that's what my brain still looks like right now. <laughs> Getting set up for this match. Looking at the pigeons, taking their bite at the pastries, but also thinking about what we had seen prior, where the spark had fallen on Midtown with the same substitution. Uprising are going to note that. Fighting their lives here to play in the money. These teams have done so much in the tournament with the Hangzhou Spark just losing earlier, but still smiles all around. Both of these teams just want to showcase the best of the best. They've already been able to have great runs throughout the playoffs. They can continue here for that money as we open up the doors in Boston Uprising, leave the attacking spawn. They're going to come back with the tried and true. The composition that was able to take down the likes of the London Spitfire and Hangzhou Spark bringing something else really special to the board. We've got Gushui on the Arissa. You know how impactful that Alari from Pineapple can really be too, but the healing pylon is already down. But there's great places to be able to set that up on Midtown. Flexibility that both Smurf and Gushui provide is beautiful here. The patience from the Boston Uprising. We're counter-rotating right down the mid again. Setting up Birdring into position currently. Trying to find lead. Can be an easy target considering he is on the Echo currently right now. Having that sustainability from Monk and Pineapple. Gushway gonna be able to see that Uprising are just forming themselves inside the side room, but Leaf finding that first pick up to Decay. Look at him through that window, trying to cut off that same rotation as they are funneled inside this room. Lee staying on the Echo too. This is just so difficult for Boston Uprising to deal with because they don't have too many angles that they can peek out of that window and not get hit by something like a Sticky Bomb or a Focusing Beam. And the longer that they stay here, the more poke that the Hongjo Spark can get into that tiny room. Well, they're also down a member, but Ant Matrix out, they're oh, ready to leave. That was beautiful. That's what they were waiting for. They were waiting for the window to come up and Burgering was able to pop it, finding Pineapple. No pylon on the board here right after that. Leaf had the duplicate, trying to get the copy. Was able to get the Orisa here. The Immortality Field was already used up from Monk, and he's incredibly low with no other sustain after Pineapple was the first to go down. Now the Hangzhou Spark having to resort to navigating around the port, playing patiently. Decay, though, with the Javelin. Gushui is going to be able to walk all over his body. Shy had activated the Pfizer earlier on, but Uprising were also able to build into the sound barrier, keeping this fight going for as long as possible. Gushui with the Terror Stars as Pineapple with the Mark coming in with the Captain Sun is able to find the backline from the Uprising. That fight off went so long. Boston Uprising were able to capture a third of the point, but now they have invested so many ultimates. The sound barrier came out from Legion Gone just to try to be able to help salvage that attack push. But Gushui hitting them with the Terror Surge shut that down immediately. So now, Boston Uprising, they do still have 
the overclock this and the terror surge of their own, and Smurf has been able to get a lot done with that. But Birdring is gonna have to weave this overclock through this window. Having to poke away there too, looking through that window and managing to go over to the side. Leaf comes in with the focusing beam, finding Smurf, who goes down with the terror surge in hand. Izayaki continuing on this fight before he gets taken out and sniped by Gushue with the javelin. He had used the window earlier on the uprising. Have to K and Smurf with their holds, but they are falling like flies here. They keep up this fight. It's being elongated, but it's just allowing Spark to profit, wasting even more time away from the uprising in less than a minute. I mean, based on the pacing of these fights, this is Boston Uprising's last chance. You've got 50 seconds left on the clock. Every single fight has gone the distance, and Decay needs to be able to get this Dragon Blade down. He's getting so low already, the Hongjo Spark know that he has his blade in his pocket, and they do not want to let him get away with that ult conversion. Pineapple does have that Captain Sun. Leap is nearing that duplicate. Sends out the Javelin, walks forward. Oh, he wants it. He wants it. They know. Oh, Shai gets teleported into his arms, and Decay follows up with a combo, but with the immortality field out, he only finds Pineapple in this. Shai is able to shut him down immediately afterwards. And Gushue, he's the insurance that the Spark need. Gushue with the 4K coming in to get the follow-up. Beautiful. Less than 10 seconds, and Uprising are nowhere in sight. All of the decay, desperate to try to touch the points. They can't get there. They can't get there and trigger the overtime. Hunger Spark just full hell Boston on their map pick of Midtown. What are in those hand warmers? The Spark are looking like they are on another level. Or is this part of the script? Will we see a reverse sweep on them? <gasps> oh no, don't you speak that into existence. I'm not gonna jinx it. They're playing way too good you right know now. know how many Spark fans are in this <laughs> audience right now? They've played so well. But Boston Uprising have such amazing, talented players that we keep highlighting for the for right reason here. But Gooshway is playing so good on this Orisa. Following up, shutting down Decay. That was their win con here, looking at the Uprising. They wanted a follow up. They wanted to be able to utilize that blade, the immortality field as well from Izayaki, but nothing was able to come into fruition as from the Terra Surge too, from Smurf, trying to pull them out from the corner that they were trying to wrap around. It was not going to work out there. Shy was in an off angle, was able to shut him down immediately afterwards. And I love these answers that we take a look at the replay here from Gushway. This is the start of the fight. Yeah, Gushui is able to get just a nice big pick there onto Smurf. And just a follow-up after that, too. This was after we ended up seeing the investment of both of those ultimates. And sadly, no conversion there for Boston. They have to get set up on their defense, and they have to full hold harder than Hongjo Spark full held them, which that sounds like a lot. Right before then, too, Gushui had gotten one other pick just right before he found Smurf. Oh, he's on the Doomfist, too. Hongjo Sparker looking to try to close this one out fast. Very similar look that we had seen earlier as Gushui manages to go right back, makes a swap, perhaps. Yeah, he's going to be going on to Winston, Winston could also finish this quickly, to be fair. Well, if you're playing split up here, being able to find that opportunity, I mean, this is where the Spark likes to thrive. Pineapple being on that Kiriko. Just waiting with Shy getting that first pick onto Lee Jagon. Monk having to be careful, though. And you can already see the Uprising playing, so split right here with Decay and Smurf holding that high ground, Bird Ring on the other side, holding hands with Izayaki. The Immortality Field saving Bird Ring just for now. But Smurf no one is, is checking Shy yet. Smurf is isolated, he's on his own. Oh, Decay trying to swoop in to help him out. He followed up and at least got Pineapple. But Bird Ring comes in right behind the fire truck, finds Gooshway. They can profit off of this. Leaf's still getting away with getting more of this poke pressure, but losing out on those two means that Leave is just gonna back away in time, wait out on the rest of the spark. Take a look at this, Smurf's actually gonna switch over to the Winston as well. He thought about the Junker Queen for a second, but it's gonna be dive versus dive. Bergring has a lot of one-shot potential when you take a look at that charge railgun shot, but Izayaki has to scatter already. He's gonna be out of LOS to all of the DPS to heal them because of the bubble. Oh, huge, that was huge here, especially with Izayaki also having the window too, just to prevent even more aggression from the spark if they wanna try to contest through that choke. Monk in some trouble, being focused down by Smurf and Decay, being put into position by Lee Jagon. They're holding a nice aggressive angle here. 
want to get too ahead of themselves. There's still two minutes on the clock here for the Hanjo Spartan. They have to play aggressive, though, because that amount of percentage that Boston Uprising captured is just not a lot of wiggle room to work with. So if you can find a pick, you can get some poke, try to win out in the ultimate economy, then Boston Uprising have a win condition on the board to be able to actually get this full hold. But what's going to be tough is uh, we do have a Dragon Blade coming online. They got does not have a sound barrier yet. Yeah, Nano Blade at least here, too. That's going to be a nice open opportunity, depending how shy utilizes his visor, clearing some extra space. The back line is going to be Monk, alongside Gushui. Smurf has a primal. Here comes a K with his own blade, utilizing the sound barrier. Gets put to sleep by Monk, who's been in the problem. Sends out the Nana Boost onto Gushui, as Gushui can't protect him. Fortunately, Monk can't get away from Smurf. That was the priority target there, and the bots in the uprising had managed to shut down Monk before he became that problem. And he still used that nano boost without Lee being able to utilize that blade to in that fight. So they used two ultimates previous. Yeah, Boston Uprising have done a fantastic job so far of picking their targets and executing. They have to do this two more times. Hangzhou Spark can come into this with ultimates, and it's also going to be hyper-paced because Pineapple has that Kiriko Kitsude rush ready to go as well. Oh, there's the rush coming in right now. Going to be able to try to rush up to that point. Bird Ring, though, with the shots, finds the lead, shuts him down, and he tries to use the blade, and then Pineapple retaliates. Being able to sidestep all the way over to the other side. Smurf tries to find Shy, but Gushui with the Primal is losing the rest of the spark. He gets a retaliation off the Decay, goes for the health pack, denies the healing from Smurf. He's forced to pop the Primal. Try to body block him by the window. There's another exit point. No, you can't go anywhere. Get over here. As Smurf claims Gushui's head, wasting more time, less than 30 seconds on the clock. Gushui kept, kept so occupied there. But Hongjo Spark have one more chance. You can see some desperate swaps coming through. Leave is off the Genji, gonna go over to the Tracer now, and Pineapple over to the Brig just to help provide some extra sustain to the flankers that are on Hongjo Spark. But Boston Uprising, they might be doing it. 10 seconds left, and Boston are looking in a position now to try to get to K this blade, as well as just get a quick pick to stop the Spark in their tracks. Ooh, that's, I mean, that's how you do it. That's how you do it. Finding Burgering and Lee Jae Gong first. Lee Jae Gong so close to that sound barrier. Look at that progress. The blade in the side room. He dashes in. He finds Shy to get shut down immediately afterwards. Look at Smurf's positioning. Playing around the pylon. Having to jump away. Unfortunately, sacrificing Izayaki. He would have had the rush here too. But just holding on to the point as long as they can. But with nobody's left to defend the Hanjo Spark. Put themselves at match point. So excited about Pineapple being able to slot into this roster and seamless, absolutely seamless. I think I heard a war horn in the crowd. <laughs> we are rallying. Helping out the war path of the Hongjo Spark to be able to, to sweep this match. <laughs> Calling in all units. We need to see the support for the Hongjo Spark in the crowd. They're gonna get a taste of their own medicine. It's a Boston Uprising gonna take down the spark. We'll have to see. As we take a look at these highlights onto Midtown, this is where they lost against the Atlanta Rain earlier, making the adjustments that they need. The spark are so quick to adapt. Love how we get to start it off too with Pineapple immediately after using the Captive Sun. That was off too of the Terra Surge that Gucci had used to bring everybody closer to him by that middle choke. Yeah, it's been such beautiful play coming through for the Hongshou Spark, and they've had so much practice as well. Dive versus dive, this is where the Hongshou Spark thrive. They love being able to play those mirror matches because they've been able to play against some of the best in the East with this composition time and time again. They're also one of those teams where we take a look at some map like Circuit Royale, and they're out here playing the dive. But they don't even show us just that. Hongzhou Spark are so multifaceted that they showed us the dive plus the Arisa composition, plus the poke. They have so many different looks that they can show us, and maybe they get a chance to show us a 3-0 as a new Junk City up next for the Boston Uprising's pick for Flashpoint.
This is where they strive the most. This is where they power up, or is this going to be where they get shut down? We're going to have to see on the other side of this break. Welcome back everyone, everything on the line here for the Boston Uprising. This all-star lineup, and this is where they match up against the Spark as we move on to map number three, on to New Junk City. And Boston Uprising are gonna have to do something because at this point they're staring down the barrel of getting three owned by the Hongshou Spark who are playing so, so well in this match today. We are going to have Lengsa subbing in for Pineapple. As we're heading over to Flashpoint, makes a lot of sense just being able to play something like the Lucio, help speed the entire team around, and make sure that those rotations on a map that is as fast-paced as Flashpoint will be much easier. But it has been a tough road so far for the Boston Uprising. This match has 
it's, it's been tough out here. It's been a little tough. Hey, there's a $100,000 money match on the line basically right here. Third and fourth place that you're staring at currently right now with the Sparks run so far. They've had quite a run. I, Jake earlier and Avril, they've been going at it. We talked to them in the green room and Avril has all his faith, faith right here on this team for all the right reasons. We've been able to see them shine throughout our time in APAC Necra. And now we are moving on to Flashpoint where the Spark have been looking like they're absolutely on fire, but going into New Junk City to also kind of throw them off looking at the way that they've been playing thus far. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, Suravasa has always been up their wheelhouse, so if Boston Uprising have to pick any Flashpoint map, maybe don't give them the map that they were able to for sure take the last time that they played against each other. Uh, New Drunk City is one of those other maps as well. When you take a look at how the dive actually plays on the map like this, it can be a little bit trickier. You just don't have as much architecture to really hide behind if you're going to be playing something like the Doomfist or the Winston. But Kind of on the flip side of that too, a lot of your flankers might be left a little bit vulnerable if they're caught out of position. Ooh. All right. Oh no, don't uh, don't tease Junker Queen. I'm all for it. I, I want love it. No, Junker I want Queen. it. Don't, don't change. <laughs> don't change off of the Junker Queen. <laughs> I don't know. I I I will wait. I'm waiting to get baited, but I, I don't think it's going to happen. Okay. What? Leave going Let's over do to it. the Tracer. Now we got the Junker Queen. We got the Smurf Junker Queen. This is great, too, because then we get to see Bergring being on that Bastion where he's been able to profit out here. Leave has had so many amazing games being on this Tracer. Let's get started already off the rip as the Uprising already taking an aggressive position around the middle part. Boston Uprising are trying to bully the Spark away into this corridor. They're actually pushing them so far off the point. Monk is stuck in a corner right now, but look at Gooshway. Gooshway finding Burgering. Easy Yaki going down right after that. They had just led a little earlier in the EJ gone. Managing to navigate away just briefly before Gooshway tries to swap him. And Smurf going in to help him out. And Lee's going to be able to finally finish him off. It's playing Ring Around the Rosie by this token. It's just all a Smurf game as he's been able to not only build in that space, but find these necessary picks before making their way down to the point. One of the things that I really love about the Junker Queen pick, and I'm so glad that Smurf walked out of the gates with this one, is that those knives can really help to pull a yeah. member of the Hongshou Spark out of position and to make it easier for the rest of the Boston Uprising to dislodge them and take them down. And you're already seeing that come into full force, especially if Gushui is going to jump in with all of those movement skills, but he can't get out. Like we saw right there, you just talked about it, pulling him right back in, and then Zakei just gets to follow up with the combo onto the dash. Beautiful damage output that we're seeing right now from the Boston Uprising. Finding lengths to last, but taking control now over two team fights. It's going to be a great start for the Boston Uprising, and they're going to continue to play this aggressively. Now, Siaki's going to have that amplification matrix up, and that is a great way to be able to zone the Hangzhou Spark away from this central point on New Junk City. Preparing up for it right now. Just pop Bird Ring down behind that window and shoot as the Hangzhou Spark starts to make their way in. But give him a little bit of space. Maybe take a mile here. Wait for it with the window now coming in, and the tank mode coming in from Bird Ring. All the damage output. Nailing down so much damage to eliminate that shield, to eliminate the back line, with Lenza going down while trying to use the rally. Oh, that rally came out and just wasn't enough to be able to sustain through all that firepower that Bergman is bringing to the table. And with that, I mean, Boston, they just had to use those two support ultimates. Feels a little bit bad to have to use the sound barrier there a little aggressively, but that is enough invested to be able to secure this first flashpoint, and we get a chance to move on to the next one. Boston Uprising off to a blazing start here, Vicky, as we head over to the refinery now. Does give the advantage over to the Spark, as you already see Gooshway managing to try to contest them by that choke point. You see Leave also trying to circle around them to sandwich them. Decay does have that blade. He'll be able to have a a ball game here if they try to funnel inside. He dashes right through to try to isolate Monk to follow up from Smurf. Love the communication as he slices and dices through Shy. Having to back away literally one, he gets shut down by Leaf. That's two still out. Monk wasn't able to use a nano boost. It doesn't even seem like he needed it because the lengths of being right there could give that sustainability to Gucci with the fly slaughter whipping right back. Lee J gone. Smurf stuck right there by the doorway. He had the rampage but was going to hold on to it. Lengths shuts him down. 
And now the Hangzhou Smart gets control over the second flashpoint. Did, did you see Smurf just like giggling while that is happening? That was, he was having just the classic tank experience in Overwatch, getting CC'd to absolute oblivion. But Boston Uprising get a chance to come back into this one with Smurf's ultimate available. So let's see how that Rampage is able to make quick work of the Hangzhou Spark. Monk has a great answer to this. You have the Nano to be able to give that over to someone to keep them alive. But here they come, Boston's coming in. Nano boost coming in, Smurf coming in with a Rampage right through the doorway. The K-Fall is up, fine shot. He was cut from that Rampage and Gooseway answers right back. All the skirmish that we're seeing in this side room right here, Burgering fighting for his life, looking right back at Gucci. So that's none of my business. Managing to navigate away because he's got no sustainability. His backline gets taken out. Lee does is able to find Lee Jagon. We'll have the sound barrier going into this next fight, but just navigating away through the next entrance. Hangzhou Spark are able to keep control of this as well. Gucci does go down before getting that meteor strike online, but that means that you can get into that with the Meteor Strike, or even just use it as an escape mechanism for this next engagement. So play a little bit more aggressively as Burgering's gonna just pop the ultimate here. All right. Keep him at bay a little bit. Not gonna actually net any kills, but Shy oh. is set up behind them. Oh! I say that, but Too where soon. was Monk? He was waiting to delay. He found Monk, and in this, he just holds forward, Decay gets the Profit right afterwards, that finds three, that's also gonna waste even more time. After the Spark had taken that point first, they're at 82%. That artillery strike is sneaky. It has a long trigger time if you want it to be able to, and that was enough for the Hongshu Spark to walk right into that one. And if you're losing Ana, you're losing such a main source of healing for your team, and those dives become even harder to initiate. Monk has been so good with landing those antis and those sleeps, and so you're taking out a huge threat of the Spark and can't go in without that. It's been a huge primary focus for them to look down at Monk. They do use the window. An anti does land into decay here. No follow potential. The immortality field was used. Nice sound barrier just in time for Izayaki, but the sleep at the Burgering to pull Bomb stick. After the sleep, love the follow-up as the overclock comes in. Shy with these shots finds Lee Jae gone next. And a 2K follow up from Gushui to wipe out the uprising and to retake this point. That fight was expensive, but it was so worth it because now Spark have been able to buy themselves another life in this map. You've got it all tied up here, one to one on New Drunk City. As we are going to see that next flashpoint open up, Boston Uprising are all ready to go, but this is in Spark's territory. They're able to make it here to be able to match Boston Uprising on that high ground. Having the positional advantage, going right over to Ducks here before dropping down right afterwards. Oh, they wanted to try to isolate Goosh right here. Monk's about to have the Nana boost. Decay close to that blade, finding Monk. Huge priority, but they've lost out on the back line here. No help, and they were able to circle around and leave with the 3K. Isolated by just the Rampage. So, oh, what is it worth with Goosh right still alive? Backing away before they make their way over to the point. Hashbar's gonna unlock, and it looks like Hunter Spark might be able to get that first capture. Lungs is trying his best to be able to keep Smurf from being able to contest that point. And that's gonna be this cap for Spark. All of Boston, though, they're coming back into this one, trying to play around Decay's Dragon Blade. Gushui is going to try to play that disruption in the back line. They're about to have sustainability with Gushui having the Meteor Strike to reposition just in case. And he's got the high ground here, activates it immediately. Immortality Field had already been used by Uziaki. Comes in right in their face. Well, the Kane had the blade. I mean, he had the dash. Answers him immediately as he comes down. The Nano boost up the shy, though, from the overclock. Finds three. Gets the 3K. Make it a 4K. Puts the K in the coffin. Cleans up the uprising while still maintaining their positioning on the point. Shy got that online so fast as well. He's been able to charge up that ultimate, just have it at the ready to be able to have a finishing blow onto the Boston Uprising attack push. And now Hangzhou Spark, they've got one more fight in front of them before they secure this second flash point for them as well. Leave as a pulse bomb again. Be able to land this out of the back line, you can see. Wow. Commanding shout. Off of that shout, Decay. Gets so much done. Gets three off from the Spark here. Gets to finally retake the point. The spark are going to be able to regroup. And he doesn't have to use the Blade for that either. So while he didn't get a chance to use it in that last fight, he now has that as something that he can use when the Tongue Spark make their way back in again. Oh, look they're, at their positioning here. Yeah, though. they're holding them outside of the ducks. Comes the artillery strike. Kushway packs away. Leave. Just trying to isolate Burgering. They had using Mortality Field. They did force that out after he tried to send out the Pulse Bomb. Nice little save here. 
Ooh, the rally though. That's just kill match. Oh, 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 wow. Oh, a little scary there. Lee J God manages to pull off the sound barrier, sets up the K with the blade, wastes even more time so that way they can even themselves out against the spark in this percentage. Boston Uprising used a lot of ultimates there. That was four in the bank now. Hoping that Smurfs Rampage was gonna come online. Might be able to be enough. I mean, if Hongshu Spark just have to walk into the central archway. They can play around this though. That's what the Doomfist is nice for. Just try to get into the back line wow. and disrupt them. Oh. He'll sleep. Huge, and then they alpha the anti right there too. But while Monk is that primary focus, he gets taken down. And they what? can't even contest. They what? back cap. What? What? Leave. Are you kidding me with Goose Reef being right there too? They no have a forward way. so far. They no way. Hong Joe Spark. Oh my god, I'd be so tilted as Boston. And they get a nice pick on the Goose Way though before moving over to the next flash point. But Hong Joe Spark snuck that out underneath them. Would have wow. never seen that coming. Actually crazy here from the Hangzhou Spark. So much potential here too as moving on to that next point. Monk is about to have that Nana Boost ready. Smurf does have that Rampage. Smurf's gonna have that Rampage to be able to hold the door, but Hangzhou Spark are playing a little bit safer around this. Everything's so low already. Scoops up two, links up. Is on the other side of that Rampage. Sends out the Carnage, finds the back line. And taking control over this fight first is going to be so important to regain that momentum. Very similar look as to what we had seen in that last point. And now they're going to be able to hold forward here before navigating right back, just in case they try to approach from the back end of this point. Boston cannot make that same mistake again. You can see them playing a little bit closer together to make sure that they're not going to get picked off by a stray coming through from Leave or Gushui. But Hangzhou Spark, Hong could put the Nano on basically anybody. But Shai's gonna the overpower with the Nano. He's trying to do it again. Look at look at the point right now. Look at the point. Leave is on there. Leave is on there. I mean, he's gonna be able to profit too. I mean, off of that overclock, Hangzhou Spark, we're able to find three Gushui coming in from the heavens with the meteor strike to find Izayaki, and they are able to retake the point while Smurf is just left behind. <laughs> We've seen such an evolution of Flashpoint right now where a lot of teams are more willing to be able to take those fights away from the point. And if that's going to be able to get them that success, then fantastic. As you can see, actually, where that fight even took place, it was on the left-hand side there of the junkyard. And now a great rotation coming through from the Spark to make sure that the Boston Uprising can't get the upper hand here. Delay them as long as possible. Make it towards that final fight potential. Just backing up, kite away. Don't need to take that damage or that poke. Davis waiting, they don't see him. He's got the pulse bomb ready, sends it off and gets the stick! Woo! Scary situation, so scary. Such isn't on the buff piece anymore, but the sound bear comes in. Decay is still the first to get taken out. Smurf is taking a nap. Shield back, finding three, the follow up to find Bird Ring. What navigation from Langsa, but they lose out on Monk. Monk going down is a huge issue, especially when Langsa oh. is just trapped, but it's enough of a distraction where the Goose can go into the front. Lexa is a beast! Overtime taken away! 99% in favor for the Spark with victory in sight, but Decay is right there to stall as long as possible. I don't know if anyone can get there. No! It up right oh, he's oh, he can't touch! The Hanjo Spark! Take third place against the Boston Uprising! season and what a statement to be able to close out their journey with a 3-0 victory over the Boston Uprising. They didn't need those first two maps, they just finished the job. The chance for Gooseway as we pan over the crowd, the Spark fans get to rejoice. This team has done so amazing throughout their season through APAC. When they landed in Toronto, I was told that they were only able to scrim like one and eight team before having an insane comeback. 
day number one. Day number two, they did it again. They proved that it was no fluke. And they had to end their season run with a nice, clean 3-0 against the Titans of the Boston Heck Uprising. Heck yeah. <laughs> yeah, he is. That's our all-star lineup. That is our all-star lineup right there. No, fantastic stuff from both of our teams. They were able to put on such a great show. This spark going off to celebrate, though, especially after Monk is your player of the match. What more is there to say about this incredible player after all of his performances on Ana this season? The sleeps, the antes, just such a playmaker. And you can feel every single moment, every single frame that he's been able to turn the tides of the team. Oh my god. I mean, what an insane sleep. You saw, at least throughout the course of this match, so many members of the Uprising purposely focused on Monk because he's been the problem. He is the situation. And what better way to highlight Monk while he's had such an amazing time throughout the course of this weekend to really pop off. Even in the comeback potential that we've seen, it was Monk with those insane sleep darts, with those nades too, that really came in clutch for so many of those fights. And then I feel like the perfect combo together with Lengsa, this is a back line that you can never ignore. And I'm so happy that we got to see Spark play that seasonal run that they had with him this year. They played so well to make it here. They really did, and especially when there were a ton of people and a ton of teams counting them out as a top contender for the playoffs. They were able to show everybody wrong. Two reverse sweeps, making it into the top four after also being the best APAC franchise from last season's playoffs. Hongja Spark able to do it again and show everybody what they've got. And we're going to close out their season and their story with an interview on stage with Monk. Thank you so much for that. Yes, the Hangzhou Spark alongside Monk, an incredible game, dominating performance. Uh, Monk, uh, congratulations, firstly. And of course, we have Jesse here for the translations as well. Uh, your coach said that you stepped up as the emotional leader of the team. Uh, what did you tell your squad after the loss to Houston that really motivated you guys to play so well today? 对，就是在昨天的呃教练采访的时候，你的教练说你是你们队当中的心态领袖。今天你们输给休斯顿之后呢，你是怎么跟你的队，就是你跟他们说了些什么话来鼓励他们，让他们这场比赛表现这么好？
I'm just saying. Hey, it's Fast fine. not rising, though. I mean, I, honestly, those are two phenomenal teams yeah. to duke it out. Yes, it was a 3 0. Yes, Boston unfortunately faltered. But they were a dominant team. They were in the top all season long. And you cannot take anything away from that performance. Yeah, even giving Florida a run for their money, I think Boston can be proud of their finish here. But honestly, the spark today were electric. This last match, they played so incredibly well. I mean, Shai Sojourn has been captivating this crowd all day long, and for good reason. He had such an incredible performance this series. Pretty much every series. It's almost normal for Shai at this point. I mean, the Hangzhou Spark just wanted this more, right? It was pretty evident from the get-go that this Hangzhou Spark team has been electric so far this playoffs, and they really wanted to achieve something uh, for their home country, of course, and come out here against the Boston Uprising, playing their game. I mean, Lead, again, another fantastic performance of him. Shy, just like the multi-kills we saw on Flashpoint. There were some, like, <laughs> ridiculous highlights going on there. Monk, of course, player of the match as well. We have some Pineapple come in for the yeah. Ilari. Love seeing some Ilari here in the playoffs. So, this time show Spark team, they were so much fun to watch this playoffs. And again, like, no one thought they could do this yeah. going into the playoffs. We sort of counted out the Eastern region. We said that Thalos Fuel might be a dark horse with the Sorry gameplay. Soul Inferno, don't think they're going to be able to match the Houston Outlaws and the Florida Mayhem. But Hangzhou Spark, with their unique Winston composition, unique in the sense that no other team really relies on it as much as they do. Gu Shui coming in on Doomfist this playoff and looking rejuvenated, playing some of the best Doomfists he's ever played. Some argue that he maybe should be a role star, and I can totally see why. Gu Shui has had some fantastic performances this playoff. So, Hangzhou Spark, many counted them out, said they wouldn't make it out of groups, and yet here they are, and earned third place. That's an incredible achievement. Not only that, you know, we always joked around saying that, you know, the West was a better region, and I think Hangzhou just making this far and, you know, making quick work, work of Boston sort of proves that, you know, we were wrong, you know? We East were, wasn't, we were wrong. isn't a worse region, you know? It's a different region, and they had their own style going on. Yeah, Shai, I think, has really carried the flag for the region here, being I think Elite on his role in the Sojourn. I don't know if anyone could actually at this tournament could match him head to head. So far, nobody could. So even though Spark do fall here, I think they have a lot to be proud of. And honestly, looking ahead to the World Cup, like Team China is looking pretty serious, right? This is a lot of that squad on the Hangzhou Spark. And I honestly think they could be pretty terrifying next month. Yeah, I mean, that was uh, absolute. MVP performances on that team, on each and every single role. There were a lot of highlight-worthy moments, not just from Shai, but from everyone else there as well. Let's once more take a look at the bracket to see how we got here. A Spark just secured themselves that third place finish, and Boston will fall to them and is now finding themselves in fourth. And that means we have one more title to hand out. We have one more match to play, and that is, of course, the match for the championship title. And that will earn them one million dollars. So a lot is on the line. You see the breakdown right here on your screens. Spark did walk away with quite a big chunk of uh, that prize pool. So once more, of course, a huge congratulations to their team, the entire org, and of course, again, everyone who believed in their journey. And there's a lot of people in the crowd who have been cheering for the Spark ever since they rocked up on this stage with their first re reverse sweep, a second reverse sweep, <laughs> because, you know, good measure, why wouldn't you? So. We've been celebrating them for the last three days. And now today, the Spark are not the only team we're celebrating. I think we also, all of us, came here together to celebrate a very special person. <laughs> and that is this guy. Let's go! It's Mr. X's birthday! Yeah. That's right! Birthday. So happy, happy birthday, birthday to our good friend, oh, Matt. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Yeah, how have you been enjoying the, the playoffs so far? Oh, I mean, they've been awesome. I think we all expected that. Uh, but, I mean, uh, we need to crown a champion, right? I think that's the, the good stuff we're getting to now. Speaking of good stuff, we got something for you. Uh oh. Hand on a cake. It's not my birthday if you don't have a cake. Right, we spared no costs. Holding a Red Bulls in there. There we go. Oh. It is the most basic funfetti cake we could find. Okay. How do Very I, how much do I on show brand. This? How do I show, how do you show this without it? Off. It off. Yeah, show I'll give it your name show on it. it off. He's definitely I, I not going to drop it. I cannot I, see how this is going to go wrong. I trust Danny to do this more than me. Oh. Because you guys have done this I don't know if you should. Oh, there we go. Yeah, there we go. It's a cake. In celebration of the one and only. I mean, I ruin it for everybody if I put my finger in it. Do it. Do it. Do it. It's your cake. Our, our makeup, it's your birthday. It's your cake. You can do whatever you want. Look to the side. Get super scared that I'm going to start getting it all over my face. I, I, I got a all question right. for Matt. Can you expand on your favorite birthday cake flavor? Yeah, vanilla was a little. Uh. I mean, 
what? You know, what, what kind of like, what, what did you expect? Like the chocolate, not strawberry cake, or the, anything? Thing. No, like once you're in the fruits and the cake, no, it ruins it all. Got to keep it just straight icing, just straight plain. <laughs> just Power icing. And sugar, that's not what even cake. Out. That's You're just go for icing. You know, you do you. It's your birthday. This Any, could have been a tub of icing with just. It might be a ton of icing. Like we are not it. sure. It kind of looks like it. Well, uh, okay. Truth be told, I didn't actually bring you up here to just celebrate your birthday. I also want to put you to work. You know, you're earning the big bucks, so I, I have to make you work for it. How about you take the next uh, send up here? Oh, no, no, yeah, yeah. Uh, coming up next, it's Uber and Mr. X. That's me, Danny. I don't that's know if you, you know that. That's you. That's I'll bring you the grand finals right after this.